click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss a possible therapy for thrashing is known as a walking set model. How a walking set size be prevents from the thrashing and how it is implemented actually in the page reference stream. What are the advantages and disadvantages of having a walking set model? Walking set model is based on the assumption of locality. This model uses a parameter known as delta, that is a big delta, which uses to minify the walking set window. Whenever an active page is in use, it is said to be in the walking set of that particular system. The idea is to examine the most recent delta references of pages. The pages that belong to this delta references descent belong to the working set and if there are no pages that were belonging to this delta references of most recent are not in the working set. And depending on this working set, the pages that are actively used is distinguished from the pages that are not being used currently. If the page is not used for a long time, then it will be dropped from the working set thus giving a new page the chance to enter the working set. Now we will see that how this working set actually work with the page reference. Suppose that we have a working set of delta equals to 10. So at time t1 we will see that the ws for t1 is containing how many pages and some instance of time t2 how many pages. So here we can see that delta equals to 10. So from the beginning where you are calculating the first for this first 10 references we are getting that the ws t1 is containing the pages 1, 2, 5, 6 and 7 and others are just the references repeated for these pages. Now at some other instance t2, let's starting from here, so if we calculate, so this is only containing 3 and 4 and others are just the repetition. So we can see that the working set model generally prevents thrashing and it depends on the working set size. If the delta or the working set size is too small, it cannot encompass the entire locality. And if it is too large, then it happens that may overlap some of the several localities. So we need to choose the working set depending on the page references or the frames that are allocated to it. If the total number of frames that is demanded is exceeded the total number of frames available, say D is greater than equals to M, then thrashing will occur as if the no processes or any of the processes are not having enough frames to determine or allocate the frames available in the memory. So if working set size or WSS is the property for each process in the memory, then we can define D equals to the summation of the each process's working set size and D should be always less than M where M is the number of available frames. Now once we have designed and determined the working set size, next the allocation of frames is very simple. First the operating system examine the working set models of every system. Now the working set window as we know that it is the system model which uses the delta references or delta most recent references. So after examining the working set window, it will then allocate a frame that much to that particular working set to determine the particular working set size. So suppose if there are 9 frames that is particularly allocated to the T1, so one more frame or one more page need to be allocated to T1 to get that 10 delta references. So in this way we can allocate the frames to the particular working set to establish its working set size. Now the working set size of the summation as we know that should not exceed the actual total number of frames available in the system. If so, then thrashing will definitely occur as more process will be needed to give in more frames. 
if the operating system sees that the exceeding matter is generating so it will happen that the process will get suspend and it may be selected by the operating system it contains a written out or swapped out to the disk and the frames that were allocated to the process are now given to the currently executing frames or currently executing processes in the working set. The working set strategy prevents thrashing by actually helping the multi-programming degree leveling. If there is multiple degree greater than the actual degree leveling then we can say that more processes are needed more frames and if the multi-programming degree is leveling low then it is said that the processes are having more frames than it actually needed. So we can prevent this type of references by actually determining that which pages are in the working set or not because it is very difficult to implement that determination that the working set window as it is a moving window, so one process will drop out from the window as an old reference as a new process will get in to the working set window at the new reference of wing pages. So this type of working set window and which pages are actively in the window can be determined by a process, says Philo. First we say that with an example of fixed timer interrupt, we can exemplify this model. Say the delta is 10,000 references of most recent times and at 5,000 references every time or interval a timer will be interrupted. So whenever a page fault is occurring, it is first checked that the working set is having the page or not. If it is not having the page, then it will be showed and examined that the 5,000 last reference bits it allocating the page or not. It is availing two bits, two in-memory bits and another reference bit that is set to it. So whenever a timer is interrupting, this reference bit is again set to null and again set to zero. So if the page is happening to be in the active set, then one of the bits will be set to one. And if the sets are on and off, then the sets are not having that particular page. So if the valid bits and invalid bits or the memory bits are set to on, then the page is currently in the active set. Otherwise, it will drop from the active set in very recent past. Note that this arrangement also cannot give us the accurate result of telling that where in this 5000 reference frames the interrupt or the page fault has occurred. So to get many accurate and more accurate result, we should increase the number of history bits or at least we could increase the frequency of the interrupt in the system. But both the frequency of the interrupt increment and the number of bits history increment will give us more computation time and cost incurring. So now this is a clumsy way of handling thrashing. As we know that it is also successful and this knowledge can be implemented to have the pre-paging. So another strategy that is more helpful and direct approach to prevent thrashing is known as page fault frequency. So in page fault frequency we know that the particular problem is to handle the thrashing and the handle the thrashing is thrashing of the page fault higher occurrence. Whenever a page fault is occurring, we know that there are higher thrashing levels. So if the page fault is high, then we say that the more process they need and the page fault is low, then we say that there are more free frames inside that process. So we can put an upper boundary and lower boundary on these page fault rates to determine actually the levels of thrashing and to determination against the result. So if you plot a curve, it will look like this. Now whenever thrashing occurs that the page fault rates go higher, so we will increase the number of frames to allocate and help in thrashing. And whenever the page fault gets lower, then we will free one frame from that particular process to allocate it to some other process. So the graph will look like this. The higher page fault, so we are increasing. The lower page fault, so we are decreasing the number of frames. 
So in this way, the page fault frequency can give us an accurate assumption of the page fault rate and the thrashing can be prevented like this. As it is a direct measure, along with the working set models, we can also have to swap out some processes depending on the scenario. Suppose that a process need more frames and no free frames are available to them. So then a process need to be swapped out and the frames allocated to that particular process will be now divided among distributed among the other processes that also needs the free frames. This way page fault frequency can help in thrashing in a more direct approach and it can be solved by placing the upper bounds and lower bounds on this threshold rate. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.